Good morning, everyone. We're back to time of 624. Those red, orange, and yellow leaves of fall are looking about as good as they're going to get across much of southern Minnesota this morning. Meteorologist Ken Barlow is back now with where you should go to take it all in, Ken. Yeah, Chris, if you live in the metro, look out the window. That's right here, right now, in the next day. Peak colors. See all the dark reds here? Those are peak colors right around the Twin Cities, especially just north. That's where it's peaking right now. And just to the south of the Twin Cities, including Minneapolis and St. Paul, or just to the south of that, including Minneapolis and St. Paul, just about to peak. The browns, they're done. And this line will move south with time. So four, five, six days from now, leaves will start to drop. I think the wind's doing a job on them out there, just a little bit. So peak right now or tomorrow, it looks like. And we do have some good news for all those who want to get out and look at the Megan. A good-looking forecast is coming up. And it's nice to check out those leaves when it's sunny and all the light hits yes, it and makes them that much more it's vibrant. It's a little more depressing when you're looking outside and it's like it was yesterday. Soupy. For what it's worth. Hey, there's a new push today to find an 11-year-old boy who disappeared 25 years ago. Our Jennifer Ann Wilson is working on this story this morning. Jen. Well, the Jacob Wetterling case is old, but it hasn't gone cold. Coming up, I'll tell you about the new campaign launching today that friends and family hope will bring answers. Good morning. It's a major delay in the Northwest Metro that's stretching more than three miles on 94. And I'll tell you details about it coming up here in our next hit in just a few minutes. Five Eyewitness News is presented by Her Burgers. The new and now must-have trends for fall are here and only at Her Burgers. From runway-inspired looks to a fresh take on vintage favorites, we've got the hottest trends to mix, match, and make your own. Whether you have a boho style or tend towards sporty chic, find the most noteworthy trends for fall in-store or visit us online at herbergers.com slash new and now. Make your statement only at Herbergers. So much positive praise is pouring in for selfies. This is crazy. There are thousands of reviews here. It's hard not to pay attention. Wait, what'd I miss? Selfie, all new tonight, 8, 7 central on ABC. Unaware of bonuses for his failed Obamacare bureaucrats. Not even knowing what's in the bills he signed. Half a billion taxpayer dollars to the Wilfs after they committed civil fraud and racketeering. I was not aware at all. What is Mark Dayton aware of? Minnesotans deserve an engaged governor who knows what's going on and what's in the bills he signs. I'll be a 24-7 leader who owns his decisions. The buck stops with me. Jeff Johnson for governor. This man is a mechanic. He can fix your car. This man works at Corner Medical and can help fit your CPAP. Select the correct oxygen or help you find the right medical equipment. Now that I fixed your car, let's take a look at fitting that CPAP. Don't be fooled by other companies that don't specialize in home medical equipment. At Corner Medical, we offer the best home medical equipment with personalized service. Ask how Corner Medical can help finance your medical equipment. Visit one of our showrooms or go to cornermedical.com. We were as quiet as, well, mice sneaking in from the outside, getting into their carpets, but Adams stopped us dead in our tracks. Call Adams Pest Control today, and we'll get rid of whatever's bugging you. Guaranteed. It seems like nothing gets done in Congress these days, but John Klein is different. He passed the law to protect our kids from predators. Another law to get overdue pay to our National Guard members. Like my husband. And John Klein's workforce law will help train the unemployed for new job opportunities. I'm John Klein. I worked across the aisle to make sure all of these bills became law. I approve this message because I'll do whatever it takes to deliver for Minnesota. It has been 25 years since his disappearance. Today, the new search happening to find Jacob Wetterling. It's a complete full circle moment, and it's an honor to do this work in his name every day. 
Coming up, we are talking with someone who knew Jacob. She remembers the day he went missing. She's going to talk about the efforts to find him and other children. Candidates in the race for governor face off today, but not all of them will be there, and it's not by choice. That story's ahead. And another deadly development in the Ebola outbreak. A healthcare worker has died overnight. We have a lot to get to this morning. Let's start, though, with a quick check of the forecast. A much nicer day on Tap Ken. Yeah, you wouldn't know by looking outside right now, Megan, but it is going to get brighter and brighter as the day goes on. The clouds are hanging on tough. We expected that, but as the morning goes on, there'll be breaks and then there'll be movement of the clouds out of the area. 48 as you head off to work right now, that's eight above the average for this time of the year. It is cloudy, but when you come home, it'll be sunny and close to 60 degrees. I still have a 70 out there somewhere in our extended forecast. Megan, I'll let you know when that will happen coming up. Okay, sounds good, Ken. Let's now get to Josie. Josie, I know you're tracking a, an accident, a 94 in St. Michael. That's right, Megan. Unfortunately, over the last half hour, it's just become a nasty commute in the Northwest Metro. Let's take a live look at this crash on 94 eastbound prior to 241. Hearing from the State Patrol that injuries are not serious, but you can see the traffic is getting by on the right shoulder only. And it's been there for quite some time, like I said, over a half hour. So you've got quite a number of vehicles there in that left lane. If you know the county roads in that area, that's one option to get around this mess. Otherwise, if you have a chance to get out the door and get over to Highway 10, that's also an option. 94 eastbound there, that's a look at County 19 in Albertville, and you're just almost at a, a dead stop there. Let's quickly head out to the map so you can get an idea how everyone's doing. Well, in the South Metro northbound 35W, just filling in in Bloomington. I'll have another update shortly, Megan and Chris. Well, Josie, today investigators are hoping that this picture could bring Jacob Wetterling home. He disappeared from St. Joseph, Minnesota 25 years ago. Today, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children is launching a new awareness campaign asking for the public's help. Jennifer Ann Wilson is here now with details on that. Jen. Well, Jacob was just 11 years old when he was abducted, and for the last quarter of a century, Five Eyewitness News has followed the search every step of the way. Recently, in 2010, we watched from Chopper 5 as federal authorities searched a nearby farm in St. Joseph. They excavated, removed, and inspected potential evidence, but investigators came up empty. The campaign launching today hopes to generate new leads by posting this picture of 11-year-old Jacob side-by-side side with an age progression. Right here, this is what he might look like today. These pictures will go up on six billboards near the place in St. Joseph. He was abducted 25 years ago with a phone number, encouraging the public to call. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children is launching this campaign with the help of the Jacob Wetterling Resource Center. Chris? Well, Jen, joining me now with more on today's campaign and the work that's been done all along is Allison Fay with the Jacob Wetterling Resource Center. Allison, thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Tell me a little bit, first of all, about the Resource Center itself and the work that you're doing. Well, the Jacob Wetterling Resource Center believes in living into hope. So we're about building a world that's worthy of our kids, and that means a lot of work in prevention. About 80% of the work that we do is prevention, whether that's policy, speaking events, getting awareness out there, and 20% of the work that we do is working with families of missing and exploited young people and even missing adults. Well, we've been talking about your very unique connection to this case. You knew Jacob when you were growing up. You know, uh, any of us who lived in the Midwest, uh, in Twin Cities area, wherever it is, who remember this case when it was going on, we all saw his face, but I've never heard much about him as a little boy. What can you, what can you tell us about him? Uh, he was a gifted athlete. He believed very strongly in fairness. Uh, great sense of humor. I mean, he was, he was a kid who really enjoyed being a part of the group. And one of the things that he really stood for was when things weren't fair. Mm -hmm. And so that's part of this whole frustration with this case is that everything that's happened to Jacob isn't fair. And he's one of the first kids to stand up for others. And so it's our job as his classmates now to continue to tell his story and continue to stand up for him. So we just showed a picture of his parents there. What kind of contact do you have with them and how do they keep their strength going every day? The Wetterlings are amazing people. I mean, the, they made a choice early on to move towards hope, to move towards what we can build instead of what was taken away. Uh, Patty, early on in an, in an interview, said she wasn't going to let anyone else take anything 
other than what they've already taken and so she's gonna fight for you know a childhood for her other children fight for a childhood for other people in Minnesota and beyond and, and Patty and Jerry have led a powerful example for us all to follow well 25 years seems like such a long time now but we're hoping that with this new campaign that comes out that it might trigger something in somebody with some new information one of the positive things with long-term cases is some of the relationships that people are trying to protect 25 years ago those relationships can fade over time by either death or breakups things like that someone might be afraid of calling in on someone 25 mm -hmm. years ago and now they feel like they have um, sort of more space from that relationship or that person so we're hoping to reach that one person who has the answer Allison we really appreciate you stopping by this morning thank you for having me uh, we will be there today as Jacob's parents announce this new awareness campaign alongside the Stearns County Sheriff and the FBI Allison will be there as well you can count on five eyewitness news for continuing coverage throughout the day well, Chris, investigators right now are looking for this little girl. She is missing in Wisconsin this morning. Sheboygan police say that seven-year-old Liliona Rose Badke was last seen parting ways with a sibling while they were walking home from school. This was about 3.15 or so yesterday afternoon. Sheboygan is about an hour north of Milwaukee. You can see a police presence here outside the girl's home. This was last night. Now, Liliona was last seen wearing jeans a black t-shirt with a monkey on it. She had a pink and white, a pink and black plaid jack pack, backpack. Uh, I'm sorry, a, a pink and black plaid jacket. She had a Tinkerbell backpack. Milwaukee Media is reporting that no foul play is suspected, but police are still asking anyone with information to call police. The third of five debates happens in about 90 minutes for candidates in the race for Minnesota governor. But not all of the candidates are participating, and that's not by choice. Reporter Brandy Powell has more from our newsroom now. Brandy. Well, Chris, DFL Governor Mark Dayton will square off against GOP nominee Jeff Johnson. Independent Party candidate Hannah Nicollet was not invited to participate. The previous two debates included all three major party candidates. Nicollet called a news conference yesterday to criticize her exclusion. Last time Tom Horner was included in the debate, and so this time it would make sense that we also would since the Independence Party is still a major party in the state of Minnesota. The Duluth Chamber says they negotiated the debate terms with the Dayton and Johnson campaigns and it included just the two candidates. In previous debates, when it comes to taxes, Dayton says he'd consider raising gasoline taxes. Johnson says he wouldn't raise any. Nicolette said she'd try to eliminate Minnesota's corporate tax. When it comes to education, Dayton promised to increase spending every year he's governor. He's done that, including funding all-day kindergarten. Dayton says Johnson would undo some of those education spending gains. Yesterday, by the way, Republican Jeff Johnson spent all day with political heavy hitter and New Jersey governor, you see him right there, Chris Christie. And in the latest KSTP Survey USA poll, Johnson trails Governor Mark Dayton 51 to 39 percent. And our chief political reporter, Tom Hauser, will be at today's debate in Duluth, starts at 8 o'clock, and we'll be checking with, in with him just a little bit later. You can always follow his live tweets. His Twitter handle is at five Hauser. Megan. All right, Brandy. Well, hey, we are learning this morning that a UN medical worker infected with Ebola has died in a German hospital. That's despite undergoing intensive medical procedures. Meanwhile, in Dallas, nurse Nina Pam is isolated this morning after getting blood transfusions from Dr. Ken Brantley. Now, doctors hope that the antibodies will help kickstart her immune system. The 26-year-old nurse is the first person in the U.S. to contract Ebola. She is among 70 other healthcare workers who treated Thomas Duncan before he died last week. If this one individual was infected, and we don't know how, within the isolation unit, then it is possible that other individuals could have been infected as well. Now, as a precaution, one of Pam's close friends and her dog have now been placed in quarantine. University of Wisconsin River Falls is making changes after an anonymous threat made on campus. The university says that some students may be allowed to stay home from classes on Wednesday. Class could be taught online or in the classroom as usual. It's all up to each individual professor. Last week, UW River Falls received a written communication saying, Beware of the Ides of October. The time is nigh and the bullets will fly. Investigators concluded the message corresponds with this Wednesday, October 15th. We are learning more about a campus community advisor accused of assaulting a student at MSU Mankato. Police say 20-year-old Alexander Gowan Nuring was looking for money when he allegedly got inside a student's dorm room and pepper sprayed her. 
Blue Earth County prosecutors say Gowan Nuring took a key card to let himself into the young woman's room on Saturday. Police say the woman suffered minor injuries but was able to fight him off. Gowan Nuring faces four charges. Just three weeks before trial, a settlement has now been announced in the case between a sexual abuse victim and the Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis, along with the Diocese of Winona. Now, a big part of the settlement is an action plan. An action plan that not only protects kids in the future, but honors the pain and the sorrow and the grief of the survivors in the past. Now, that action plan contains 17 new protocol points for child protection. At the root of this case, accusations from a man known only as John Doe 1. He says he was sexually abused by Father Thomas Adamson while he was an altar boy at a parish in St. Paul Park in the 1970s. Now, because this is a private civil case, we don't know the size of the settlement, but one expert says it could be in the tens of millions of dollars. The church is now considering bankruptcy. If it can't pay the entire claim, it could sell off property. It could seek relief in federal bankruptcy court. If it were to do that, it would mean that the church would only pay a fraction of the settlement. Victims should not be shortchanged in a bankruptcy proceeding, and a bankruptcy proceeding should not be used as a way of escaping those, those moral and legal obligations. Can reject a bankruptcy filing. A sister's new plea to the terrorists holding her brother hostage. Our efforts at reopening dialogue continue to be ignored by those holding John. Plus, what U.S. officials are admitting about the effectiveness of airstrikes against ISIS. And deadly severe weather tears through parts of the south, the size of the storm, and where it's headed next. And all we have here are some clouds and a little bit of wind. Those will both be getting better or moving away during the day today. Cloudy at 8, some sun by 10, but a lot more sunshine headed our way with 60s. This afternoon, the full forecast is just ahead. And it really is a rough commute this morning in the Northwest Metro. A crash is to blame on 94 eastbound. I'll have details in just minutes.